Hi, my name is Brian Davis, the amateur cook with time on his hands. Well, not so much time nowadays because we're all getting back to work, but you know, I fell in love with cooking again, so lockdown kitchen continues at the same pace it's been going at. I've been dreaming of this dish which I'm going to make today. It's called lamb kleftiko, a Greek um, lamb dish. Um, which is it's got its origins in people stealing meat and I've got a couple of Cypriot and Greek friends coming over tonight who I'm cooking this for. Um, it's a fascinating dish. Um, I'm cooking it in the traditional clay pot um, and I've never done it before and there's so many different variations on the recipe. I've had to look at all sorts of different ways of doing it from Rick Stein to the Guardian newspaper to a guy called Demetrius. Um, to try and figure out if I can cook a lamb kleftico that my friends from Greece and Cyprus will say is damn good. So stay tuned. I've got this nice piece of um, lamb leg, boneless, which I've got from my local um, meat wholesaler. It's halal, of course. Right, I'll just um, open this, wash the meat, and then we'll cut it up into, into chunks. So I'm just going to tidy the meat up now, um, see which bits I'm going to use for kleftico and then the remainder to be used in the curry. I try and make my chunks for the kleftico around 150 grams each. It cooks faster and that's a typical sort of portion. Yeah, well that's going to be three chunks. We can cut through here and to two chunks. So let's see how much have we got for my clefty coat. I want around 1.2 one to 1.2 kilos. Let's get through here. That's my kleftico done, now I just get ready everything for the stock pot. Okay, for the kleftico, very simple marinade. I start with 120 millilitres or half a cup of red wine. I'm using a Australian Cabernet Sauvignon. If you don't want alcohol in the marinade, use cranberry sauce instead. I'm going to use, add four tablespoons of this beautiful Jordanian olive oil my friend gave me. And I'm going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar um, or you can use red wine vinegar. I've got apple cider vinegar here, that'll do. Then I've got three cloves of garlic, one small onion chopped up, Just mix those up. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper and then I'm going to add some Palestinian baladi zatar. Um, or you can use oregano, and I'm going to put two heat teaspoons in, and that's it. The lamb inside the bag. And then just pour that in over the chunks of lamb, and just leave it overnight in the fridge. It's as simple as and easy as that. Okay, you can see. I've started building the dish already. What I've got in here is a kilo of peeled potatoes. I've got 10 small onions, 10 cherry tomatoes, and three bay leaves already. I'm gonna add some six cloves of garlic, which I've sliced up. I'm gonna distribute them over the potatoes and the veggies here. And the remainder I'm gonna put up on the top over the, over the lamb. Okay. I'm gonna add one fairly large bell pepper and over that I'm going to drizzle some of this fantastic Jordanian olive oil that I've got. Two or three tablespoons, good glug. 
I'm going to give a tablespoon of oregano. Yes, yeah, so there seems to be a lot of debate on how much oregano to add. Some people say as little as a teaspoon. Some people say two tablespoons. I've just opted with one tablespoon. This is a half tablespoon measure, by the way, because you saw me put two of them in there. Some people put lemon in, some don't. Some put two, some put one. I'm just going to use one. Yeah, I think one's definitely enough. And two would be overkill. There's that. Lime juice in. All right, before I go any further, I'll season, because I meant to season earlier. A bit of Himalayan pink salt, not too much. And a good whack of black pepper. Then I'm going to go in with, I'm just going to, I've got 250 millilitres here, I'm just going to judge it as I pour it in. If I use all of it or just, uh, I'm going to use it all. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with the meat. You'll notice I'm using a clay clay pot. That's the traditional way that it was was made. You don't have to do that, of, of course. There are several ways you can do it using a casserole dish. Um, but make sure um, you've got a nice um, seal on the top. Um, again, I think the best way to do that is probably put aluminium foil on and then close down the top. Well, I think I may have get, got this just about right. There we go. Oops, on the bell peppers has popped up. You can go back down below. And then I'm just going to finish that with those slithers of garlic all over. Yeah, on the clay pot, don't just run. This one's from IKEA. I've had it for years, I've never used it. So I took it out of the box the other day. I was like, right, oh, I just whack that in the oven, it'll be fine. Then there's some instructions. So I thought, ah, oh, better read them. Then it told me, you've got to soak the whole thing, including the lid, for at least 30 minutes, total immersion before use, and for the first time, and then before each use, do the same again for 10 or 15 minutes, or if you've not used it for a long time, do it for half an hour again. So be careful. Um, because it could um, give you a nasty surprise. So that's ready. I've just got to go wash my hands, put the lid on. I'm going to put it in the oven for a minimum of three hours at 160 degrees C, fan assisted. After three hours, we'll have a look at it and see if I need to add any more stock. See how it's going. I may have to go to four or five. Some people cook them for up to six hours. Um, but I think by the way I've prepared the meat, Putting it in smaller cuts, three hours is going to have it nice, nice and tender. There it is, the Cleftico in its clay pot in the oven. Luckily it just fits. I hadn't thought to see if the pan would fit in the oven, but as luck would have it, it does. And I guess the key think about those things when they design these things. The lid's on nice and tight, so you can see the timer on there. 0620. It's not 620 in the morning or the evening. I don't bother to set the clock. So we'll be back in three hours to have a good look at that. In fact, what I will do is I'll have a look after two hours just to make sure we're going okay. Here we are at the two hour mark. We definitely don't need any more liquid. Back in the oven for another hour. There it is. Lamb Cleftico. I, just 20 minutes before I added some feta in there. I've got to cover it up and keep it warm and get it back in the oven. But it smells tremendous. My Cypria friend has just checked the meat and says it's perfect. I, don't, I think she's just giving me good compliments, which I don't deserve. But back in the oven. But it looks like it's okay. I'm a happy man. Thank you.